Okay, so here we go with the finals. Uh, this hand has no creatures, but I can cast all my spells, and all the spells are fine, so I will not toss it back. I'll start by holding up a shock. Alright, he leads with black. There's a corrupt going around, so maybe he is mono black. Continue to bring out the red with nothing to play. Okay, he is black white. Unless he's going to go second phase, then it looks like we get all the way up to three mana without having to deal with anything. Okay, so we get a ring flesh too. Uh, we now have three total removal spells. One for a guy with one power, one for, I'm sorry, uh, toughness, one with two, and one with four. So all we need now is an actual threat. All right, here we go, and he's an Oromancer. Okay. That's not too bad. Sometimes I'm a little uh, conflicted on whether to wait for an enchantment or something like that to come down on those, or if I should use my mana more efficiently. But they're all... Just take it down. I was hoping that I was going to draw my uh, five powered threat there so that I could use the mana more efficiently, but just drew a blank. Alright, let's see what he's got now. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if I should use my outrage on that or not. It's really not that big of a deal yet, especially since they don't have anything that he can kill out. So let's see what the top of my deck brings me. And another blank. Okay. So I've got plenty of lands now. I've got an answer for that if I want to. But I'd really rather spend it on something bigger if possible. So let's hope that he plays something in the first main phase. Also, if you're newer to the game... Um, try not to play creatures during the first main phase like this, because then it gives your opponent information. And so now I have a choice between the Blightcaster and his flyer that can pump up. And normally, if he wouldn't have cast that before, I would be faced with the choice of, should I kill this thing that's about to attack me and take the two damage? So now I have the information, and I can choose to kill the Shade if I think that the Shade is better. And right now the Shade um, can actually pump up to be a 4-4 four, four flyer. So I am going to take that one down. So him playing that first main phase may have cost him the shade. Okay, well that's actually relevant here. Uh, I can play the Mutavolt and block and then also get in my Ring Flesh. And that'll bring it down to a 0-2, so maybe you'll kill it and survive. Then I can start getting back at him. It also lures him well, because his is a 2-3, so he thinks he can attack with impunity against the Muta Vault. Alright, there we go. So I will ring flesh first, just to make sure he doesn't have anything that could change it. Okay, he doesn't. So now we will make the mute of all the guy. Wait for him to okay my mute of all as a guy. And block. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Well, the good news is that I got a Doom Blade out of him, so I traded my Mutal Vault for a Doom Blade, and I did. I was going to say I did get a block, but it really didn't block anything since he had negative power. Okay, so now I've got a, a combo here. Uh, he doesn't have a creature that I'm thrilled about comboing with, but I now have enough mana to steal one of his creatures, and if it should die, bring it back. So I guess I don't really have a combo yet. I still need a sack outlet. Let's bring that big card up. Sorry about that. If you were wondering what cards I was playing before. My friend Jason here wants to know how the draft went. It's a bit of a long one, so we're still in it. The draft that I did just before this was not a long one. I, uh, I put together a nice little deck. My first round opponent didn't show up, and my second round opponent conceded the match after the first game. So I don't know if that was like a rage quit, or if he just accidentally misclicked on forfeit match instead of forfeit game. But the last draft was a very quick one. I drafted, I won one game, and I took down the pack. So, Okay, so I've got two of these now. If I had a sack outlet, I'd be doing really well. So let's hope that I can draw one into one of my sack outlets. So he's going to get a hold of me for five here. So his clock is picking up a little bit. Still only on a four turn clock, so I've got plenty of draws. Okay, he's got a shield. Doesn't bother me too much. I don't think that I have any enchantments either in the main deck or in the sideboard. Because if I did, I might be able to steal his Blightcaster and cast an enchantment to get that effect. I don't really know if it would be worth boarding in an enchantment that I wouldn't normally play anyway, just because he has to play that and I have to uh, get off the active treason on it. If I saw that he had multiples, I might start to play some enchantments for that sort of thing. Okay, well that has legs, so that'll do. Especially since it turns itself into a zombie if it dies. Now I'm probably not going to block yet. Griffin flies, so I can't block it, and the blight caster's only two damage. I'm not sure that it's time for that yet. I'm still at eleven life. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so he turns my guy into a zombie, and he has a big ten point life swing every turn now. On the bright side, I can act of treason to get a life swing back my direction if I need to, but I'm going to need something that permanently deals with that. These act of treasons are really just going to buy me a little bit of time. You know, what I'm really digging for here is a blood baron, because then I could steal it, get my life swing, and sack it. Well, it's not a Blood Baron, uh, but it is an answer that will deal with the bird. I'm still at four, so... I'm going to need another answer after that. Well, let's count up the mana here. Can I Grim Return that bird? Let's see, I have four, five, six, seven mana. Play the Liturgy, which will leave me with two untapped and three in the pool. Okay, so that's five, t um, one short on some really uh, fun antics here. But anyway, I do have enough to Liturgy and then Grim Return if I want the bird. Um, 
So I could do that and then double block with the bird and the zombie. Well, my, what would be more fun is if I had just one more mana, and then I could get the bird, whack him with it, gain a whole bunch of life, kill the bird, and then get the bird back with the Grim Return. But I'm just one mana short. Okay, so the bird tries to hide when I get the Liturgy of Blood in there. But even Modo cannot hide the bird. So I'll kill him, I'll bring him back from the yard. So that's not such a bad use of Grim Return. You know, I could be aggressive here and get the zombie in, because I'm at four. Because if he equips that up, I can't really double block to kill it anyway. So I'm going to be in a chump blocking situation for a while with the Blightcaster. Ooh, pacifism. Killing my bird. That was unkind. Okay, so after this turn, he's got me on a one turn clock. I'm gonna need a kill spell or something with at least three toughness. Chandra's Outrage is not going to do it. Barrage of Expendables. Okay, that's a start. Actually, that's probably the, the best possible... Yeah, I think that's my best possible draw at this point. So I get his broadcaster back. Unfortunately, I don't get the Blight Caster, and then cast the enchantment. I have to um, mix up the order on those. I guess it wouldn't really make a difference anyway. There's nothing I want to give negative two, negative two. Okay. So now I can... Or wait, no. I don't want that to be my target. Let's redo this. Um, so I can ping him for one with his own guy. So that was the best possible spell that I could draw at that point, because it killed his one guy that was just about to finish me off. So I've got defense, and I've got another active trees in my hand, so I've got another kill spell for the next creature he plays. Which is right here, okay. And I'm pretty much forced to act on that. And my zombie that's been pacified. Ooh, okay, so we have a dilemma. Do I... Well, before we get to that, the zombie that's been pacified is uh, now one point of damage. So if he gets down a creature that's got a, just a single toughness, I can use that zombie to take it down. So that's going to be useful. Now I have the choice. Do I want to take the cockatrice and hit him with it? Or do I want to just kill it outright? So I'm going to kill it outright. Hopefully he will have something bigger than the cockatrice that I will be happier to hit him with. Okay, so he's got three cards in hand. I have one real kill spell left and one kill for something that just has a single point of toughness. Fire Shrieker, okay. So he has uh, double foil equipment. Oh, okay, well, you can't draw all your gas, right? So if he does get a creature down that manages to stick, it's going to be spectacular. Hopefully, he will put something huge down and then equip it with Fire Shrieker so that I get to hit him twice with it before I sack it. So let's play that mountain. Still got the two cards in hand. Oromancer. Does he get anything back with that? I 
thing I didn't sack for the pacify. I'm gonna remember not to do that. Alright, so he's making it a 2 5. It's a little aggravating when he gets, like, that's the best possible kind of thing he could be putting down right now, because he only needs two points to kill me. Oh, okay. Well, even though I already had a sack outlet, it's nice to have options right now, because I'd much rather have that zombie gain me four life than hit him for one. But yeah, that Ormancer is a bad spot for me, because it's got just enough power to kill me, just enough toughness to survive the zombie being thrown at it. And it's not so big as to where it's going to make a huge difference when I act a treason. Hmm. So I could act a treason it. I could just wait and sacrifice the zombie to gain four life. If I did gain that 4, though, he'd probably fire Shrieker it and then hit me for 4, putting me back to 2 real fast, so it wouldn't be a 3-turn clock, it would just be a 2-turn clock. So I only get 2 in against him, but I do get to gain 4 life, and that's a pretty big deal. 6 is much, much larger than 2. Yep, he's still drawing threats. Okay. Well, that's not that big of a deal, because that has one toughness. Okay, so he gets to see that I just have the mountain in my hand. And it's good to know that he has that, because since that looks for a white or a green creature, if I can ever get that to come back from the graveyard on him, then I might be able to take one of his white creatures, which would be awesome. So yeah, wait for him to equip it, hit it for one. And that's a little bit of a two for one there, because I got to take down his zombie and his pacifism. Actually, it's kind of a three for one, because the zombie was off of another card. So, that's a big deal. Okay, so he's still got three cards in hand, but I have an outrage. Okay, so let's play that mountain that he knew that I had anyway, hold the outrage up. And I think that I've stabilized. If I can get my own threat and neutralize one more of his, then I might be in business. Now I've already used all of my spells that can steal his creatures. So I'm drawing pretty weakly there. Five is bigger than four. Okay, so that's not a spectacular card, yeah, but it is enough to kill me in two turns, and my RH doesn't do anything. Okay, so I'm going to have to two-for-one myself here, but it's better than dying. I've got a blocker that I can sack to deal one point of damage, or just the, the regular two that he would deal. Um, so yeah. If he tries to kill my guy, I can fling it at the Mastodon for one, and then outrage it, and that'll kill it. If he just attacks in, I can block an outrage. Quite accept this. Okay. So good. Now I get a little bit of value out of this. Um, yeah, wrong one. Let's fling it. So he spent a Quag Sickness and a Siege Mastodon. And I spent a Blood Baron and an Outrage. So we're even. And I get two points of his life total. So I'm actually up on that transaction. So this is awesome. I might pull out of this. Um, he does have two cards that I don't have. I've got my two sack outlets. He's got his two pieces of foily equipment. 
So this is going to come down to the top of the deck. Okay, that's a threat. It is not a good threat, but it's a threat. Other than Sangir, I don't really have good threats in this deck, so it's mainly dependent on the threats of my opponent's deck. Okay, so that is a seven turn clock. Watch out, buddy. Okay, he blanks. There we go. Hey, okay. So, that's a big deal. So, what was a seven turn clock? Now I'm going to hit him and get him down to 12. And then I'll have four points of power on the board. So, that's a three turn clock. So, I can pull this out if he bricks for three turns. All right, what you got? Okay, there's the first turn. Oh man, I even got a threat. Okay. Here we go. So let's send in. Let's get him down to eight. And then, when he's at eight. Oh, okay. So that wasn't a brick, he was just waiting. Uh, so the shortcutter is easily the one to sack here. Okay, so anyway, um, we'll have two, and then that'll change to five. So he'll go down to ten, and I'll have five points. So that'll still be a two-turn clock after this. So nothing really changed. So we're still okay. Okay, so he had two Celestial Flares. Um, well, this one we don't sack because we can just get some value out of it. The uh, question is, do I want to hit him in the face for one or sack for four for myself? Hitting him for one doesn't really change his clock, since I've got a three-powered guy. Gives me a four-turn clock now, and it wouldn't really speed up if I hit him for one. But anyway, we've pulled all the way back from being down to two life. So I think I'm actually in the lead now. I don't know what his two cards are. But he's got plenty of mana. So I would think that if they were some sort of threat, he would have played him out by now. <laughs> okay, so he is a Festering Newt. Uh, so I can't do it now because all my active treasons are gone. Uh, but in the future, I might be able to steal his Newt and put it in my cauldron and drain life him for four. Okay, I've got a chance to kill his Newt here, but I'm going to let it get equipped. I could have flung uh, my guy at his Newt, but I'm going to hope that I can get that thing out of the way and then start swinging for three. Oh, see, now I wish he would have killed the Newt. Because before it wasn't that big of a deal, because he would have had a, a double striking 1-4, which still would bounce off of my Minotaur, but now he's going to have a double striking 3-4, which will eat my creature, and then me in fairly shorter order. He's got me on a, a three turn clock at this point. I know, maybe bigger, because I can block it, and then sack it to the cauldron to go up to 14. And if you block something, and then sack it, it doesn't get to do combat damage. And because this thing has Vigilance and Lifelink, I can't really swing back on him. So I should probably chump block this turn. That's better than a six point life swing. And by 6, I mean 12, because he would go up 6, and I would go down 6. Okay, so I'm momentarily higher on life than him. If I can get a kill spell out of this, 
then we can reset and go back to the way things were. Not a kill spell. Okay. So he is going to get me for six. I've still got two turns after that. I don't really have anything in my deck that needs this large amount of mana, so I can hold two. Oh, he has another threat. And that will change the clock as well and speed it up by a turn. I'm going to need something significant here. That is not significant. But I will cast it anyway just to get some information out of him. Yeah, he's going to kill me. Okay, he had a fortify, which is nice to know. Okay, let's uh, move on to game two here. 